I had this incredible encounter with King Jesus years ago where I was in Big Bend National Park and I was seeking the Lord and I was on a 30-day fast. And listen, I'm a fat boy. I had billions of cells crying out, what? Are you high? I told God, I said, God, because I went to the most, okay, I drove until the road turned to dirt, and then I drove until the road ran out, and I drove across a field until I couldn't drive any further, and I got out, and I pitched my dadgum tent. I busted out my water, my Bible, and my pistol, and I said, I'm sitting right here, and I ain't moving until I hear God speak. It's true. And I don't know, three or four days into it, after a few days, it didn't matter how many days it was anymore. I was like, yeah, 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 right? I'm seeking the Lord, and the Spirit of God shows up, and I had this amazing encounter with King Jesus, and I saw a wall of glory, and it was the presence of God, and I saw a hand come out, and this hand had nine small things in it, and they all looked like marbles, and when I zoomed in, I went, zoop, and I saw the jawbone of a donkey, and I zoomed back out, then I looked at another little marble, and went, zoop, and it was a small army, and I jumped back out, then I looked into another mar marble, zoop, what is that? It was a tent peg. And I jumped back out and I said, Lord, what is this? And God Almighty spoke to me. He said, Troy, these are the nine small things in the book of Judges. Search out the matter. You guys need to look it up. Nine small things in the book of Judges. Guys, we all know that God Almighty speaks in a still small voice. But if you want to hear God speak, you're going to have to tune your heart to be still and to be small in the midst of all this confusion, and this is what I wanna say about the media. God Almighty is calling his people to come out of the media mess and the mob. Get your head out of the lap of Delilah. Because you're not gonna find the power of God there. Everybody like, well, my God, I like Fox. I mean, you ain't gonna blaspheme Fox, are you? I get hate mail. If I say anything about Fox News, I get a stack of hate mail like I ain't even Texan. That's blasphemy. I'm a sixth generation Texan. Like, oh. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like this. Listen, in the Bible, a fox has a political spirit. Herod was called an old fox. You go tell that old fox, I'm, I'm too busy out here raising the dead. Are you going to let the old fox tell you something? I, I, listen, I want to tell you, get your head out of the lap of Delilah and hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church today. Right? Okay, what does Revelation 3.6 say? Let he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Get your head out of the lap of Delilah because God Almighty is amplifying a word. Well, Pastor Troy, I just don't know, you know, I don't know, I don't know where to step. Well, listen to Proverbs 3.6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Mm. Esther 3.6. Is an enemy of God's children has indeed risen up, but he disdained to lay hands upon Mordecai alone, for they had told him of the people of Mordecai. Instead, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom, the people of Mordecai. I want to just tell you this, you cannot be dismayed by a next level demonstration of evil during this time, which is all you're going to see in the lap of Delilah. I, I want to close by telling you that you have got to check out 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3, there's this incredible story, and this story is just, it, it's easy to dismiss because what happens is Elijah is in it, and Elijah is something like the Rodney Dangerfield of the Old Testament prophets. He gets no respect whatsoever, right? And so he's out there minding his own business, and one day three kings show up, and it's Jehoshaphat who's the king of Judah, and then there is the son of Ahab and Jezebel, and then there's also the king of Edom. And these three kings come walking up to him. And they say, he says, what's the deal, Pickle? And they say, well, uh, the Moabites, you know, we're, we got to go to war, and we're dying of thirst, and we don't know what to do. And he tells them, why don't you go seek your prophets? In other words, go to the news and find that, would you? Because, you know, you have no respect for a, a prophetic word. And Jehoshaphat's like, I do. And he goes, I know you do, sir. And this is what he said. If Jehoshaphat was not among you, I wouldn't pay any attention to y'all whatsoever. But he says, because you're here, here's the deal. 
I'm going to send water in. You ain't going to see it rain. You, you're not going to know where it's going to come in. It's going to come in through Edom. You guys are going to be able to drink. And then he says this, you shall utterly destroy the fortified cities. That's what he says. And he goes off and, man, dude, you're going to wreck their economy. It's going to be crazy cool. Sick them. And they said, okay. So they took off and they went. And guys, they won battle after battle after battle after battle after battle. The spirit of the Lord was with them. And they're like, woo And they got to the very last fortified city. And then there was an offensive attack from the king of Moab. And in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 26, it says that when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. That was the prophetic word, right? And then verse 27 is a strange verse. And this is what it says. Then the king of Moab took his oldest son who would reign in his place, and he offered him as a burnt offering on the wall. And the great angry and a great anger came upon Israel and they departed from him and they each one returned to their own land. What? What are you talking about? This is what happened. They were winning, they were winning, they were winning, they were winning, they were winning. And then the king of Moab walked out and said, I'm leveling up. I'm going to show you something that you've never seen and it's so big and it's so scary and you're not even going to know how to process this. You see my boy? I love my boy. Watch this. Pours gasoline on him and sets him on fire in front of all of Israel. And they saw a demonstration of evil that they had never seen before. And it shocked them and they forgot the word of God. They forgot their mission. They forgot who they were. They forgot what their calling was. They forgot what the promises were. And they're like, we don't know how to process this. We're heading back to the house. That's what they did. And they didn't finish, even though God had spoken. And God said, this is what's going to happen. Because the people were so intimidated by a next level demonstration of evil, they didn't finish. Tell the person next to you, tell them, tell them this, finish well. Yeah, you ain't done yet. I'm telling you, you are not done yet. The Spirit of God is with you. You are not done. You don't go home because some knucklehead gets up there and shows you something like, well, I don't know what to do with that. I'm going home. I know what to do with it. Kill it. Attack it. Go, no, 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 no. That ain't what God said. But we don't even know how to process this. It's just, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We're just going to go home. You don't have the option to go home. You have to finish what the Lord gave you and trusted you to do. You ought to be a drop-dead, sold-out Jesus freak that seeks God and people ask you, dude, why do you have so much hope? And you ought to be ready always to give an answer to that. Friends, I just want to just encourage you and just tell you, don't let the chapter close because you went home and went, I never saw anything like that before. Guys, the Bible says that the wrath turned upon Israel. It wasn't the wrath of God. It was, it was a term that the Moabites used that was called the wrath of Chinosh. And Chinosh was a demonic spirit that literally came against them. And they gave place to it because they went, this is too scary and I don't know how to deal with this. Pull up your big boy and big girl pants and be the people that God has called you to do and say, Jesus hadn't left me. Man, that's some big time evil, and that's just proof it needs to be taken out. I've seen some intimidating, scary things throughout the years in saving girls out of sexual slavery, some things that I didn't even know how to process, and every single time I just say, Lord, help me, King Jesus, sir, to be much more overwhelmed by your goodness than I am by any form of evil whatsoever. And that is a word for you.